G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here. In this video, we'll go over the basics of how to live stream using vMix. We'll also discuss some of the things worth considering when you're just starting out, such as internet speeds and streaming quality settings. If you're new to live streaming and you want to try vMix, I'd recommend downloading our free 60-day trial at vMix.com. And then you can follow along with this tutorial step by step. If you're fairly familiar with vMix and you want to stream right now, feel free to use the chapters to jump ahead or watch the super fast video tutorial linked in the description. If you watch that, you'll be up and streaming in under 93 seconds. vMix can be used to create awesome live video productions by mixing together cameras, audio, graphics, titles, remote guests, videos, NDI, and so much more. You can then stream that production out to your favorite streaming destination. I'll be showing you how to stream to one destination today, but vMix supports up to three. I'll put a link to our tutorial video on multiple destination streaming in the description. All right, so let's jump into our vMix production. Now today I've got vMix 27 running and I have a basic production that's already set up. I basically wanna just stream out my camera that's located here in the output window to my streaming destination. So by default, anything that's in this output window right here is what's going to be seen by your stream. It's known as the program output or output one in vMix. So in order to set up your stream in vMix, you'll need to go to the streaming settings. So at the bottom of vMix down here, you'll see stream. And then next to that is a little gear icon that you'll need to click to open up your streaming settings. All right, so this is what your streaming settings look like. Up the top is a really handy section called profile. Now profile allows you to create different profiles with different streaming settings that you can switch between. So if you do a number of productions from vMix that have different settings, bit rates, resolutions, you can use the profiles to switch between them. So I click add here, give it a name and it will create a new profile for new streaming settings. Then I can use the drop down menu here to switch between them. So by default, you have a default profile. So at the moment, we've just got one, we haven't added any new ones. So when we save our settings here, it's going to save it to our default profile. So this default profile, as well as any new profiles, these will be saved to your local preset. So up here, you can see I've got live streaming tutorial. That's my local preset. So any profiles for streaming will be saved to that local preset. So underneath that are some numbers, one, two, and three. Now these represent the three streams that you can set up in vMix. So at the moment, you can see number one is highlighted, and that means we've got stream one set up. If we wanted to set up stream two and stream three, we would click on these here but I'm just going to be using one stream today. Next, we have the destination section, which is pretty important because we need somewhere to stream to. So the destination dropdown menu allows you to choose where you're going to be streaming to. vMix has a lot of built-in options for streaming that allow you to just log into your account and then stream. For example, places like Vimeo, YouTube, Twitch, and Restream, they just allow you to connect to their servers via an API, and then you can start streaming directly from vMix. Now, if your selected option isn't available, don't worry. You can use this custom RTMP server option up the top. Your streaming provider will display your streaming URL and your stream key in your account settings. So you just need to log into your streaming provider and then copy and paste in your URL and stream key here. Then you'll be able to connect to their streaming servers. So where are we going to be streaming to today? Well, I'm just going to be streaming to our YouTube channel using a private stream for this tutorial. Now I'm going to select that from our drop down menu here. And then I've already logged into my account by clicking on this YouTube settings. So I've already logged into my account. I've given it a title. Now the privacy I've selected here today is private because I'm going to probably be doing a hundred takes of this video. So I don't want everyone to see it. Typically, if you were going public, you would select the public option down here and then click okay down the bottom. So each streaming provider is going to be slightly different, maybe a slightly different way to log in and they have a few different settings that you can choose via their API. So it's gonna be a matter of testing out to find out you know, which streaming provider works best for you and what options they have that are going to work for your stream. So one thing to keep in mind is that APIs sometimes might have issues. So your streaming provider, their API might be down. So if that's the case, you can still use the custom RTMP server option off the top here. And most streaming providers will also give you a URL and a stream key that you can create manually on their end. So just keep that in mind. Now you can check out the custom RTMP video in our description as well if you wanna try using that. Okay, now we need to move down to our quality section here. Now this is where we need to have a brief conversation about internet connections. To live stream, you'll need to have enough upload speeds to send your video 
to your streaming destination in real time. Upload speeds are really important to streaming. Usually internet providers advertise your download speeds because that's what's important for web surfing, watching Netflix and downloading files. However, you'll need to find out what your upload capabilities are as that's what you're using to live stream to your streaming destination. You're sending them a lot of video data for them to stream. Now, usually ISPs will list your speeds as something like 25 slash 10, which means that you have 25 megabits per second in downloads and only 10 megabits per second uploads to play with. Your upload speed is typically much lower than downloads because most people want downloads, but as streamers, we need to have good uploads. Here's an example of an Australian internet provider you have the download speeds here and then the upload speeds listed here. Upload speeds is what you're going to be wanting to take a note of when signing up for a new internet provider. Now there is plenty of discussion about how much of your uploads you actually want to use for your stream. Typically we'd say 60 or 70% because you wanna give yourself some headroom just in case of network congestion or if your grandma starts uploading videos or video chatting while you're trying to stream. Now you can do a speed test to see what your real world upload speeds are actually getting. Sometimes you might get an advertised upload speed from your provider, but when you connect, it's much lower than that. So you can use a speed test to check this out. And if you Google speed test, you should be able to find one. And I believe that Google also offer a speed test now. Now, one thing to remember is that your upload speed may vary depending on what time you're streaming. So 10 a.m. on a Wednesday may be way better than a peak time like 8 p.m. on a Friday. So when you do your testing, try and do the test around the same time that you plan on streaming. Now, I would also recommend using hardwired internet, using an ethernet network cable, as Wi-Fi might be inconsistent when you're connecting via your computer. Also, please try and make sure that you've isolated your network as much as possible so you don't have a lot of other people trying to upload and download while you're trying to stream. Whew, all right, so that was a little long, but how does your internet connection and your speed affect your quality settings down here? Well, if you take a look at the menu, you'll see your selected resolution, which is 1080p, and then you'll see my bitrate, which is 12 megabits per second. Now we need to make sure that our connection can support this bitrate. So as I've selected 12 megabits per second, I will need to have at least a 20 megabits per second connection for it because that's 60%. Now, if you only had a 10 megabits per second connection, then you'd wanna use a much lower bitrate. So 60% of 10 would be six megabits per second. Now you can choose something lower from the drop-down menu here, or you can click the little gear icon next to it to make more adjustment to your streaming quality. So these are your streaming quality settings. Now up the top, you can see that you can adjust your bitrate up here. Now I have got 12 megabits per second selected, uh, but I could change this by typing in a new number. Now you can also adjust your encode size here. Now at the moment, I'm doing this full production at 1920 by 1080, and that's what I'm streaming at. So I'm recording and producing and streaming in 1080. However, some people might not have enough upload speeds for the bit rates that they need for 1080. So instead, they might wanna lower their resolution to 720 because 720 will require a lower bitrate. So you can still do your full production in 1080, record in 1080, but because you don't have great internet, you could lower your encode size to 720 and therefore use a lower bitrate that your lower speed internet can handle. What if you don't know what bitrate to use? Well, don't worry, your streaming provider will provide a guide on their website that will outline recommended bitrates for streaming. For example, YouTube recommends 12 megabits per second for 108060, which is what I've got set up today. Now, as I'm streaming at 108060p, it does require a pretty decent bitrate because there is a lot of data. Now, if this was 108030p or 72030p, then my bitrate would be much lower. Places like YouTube recommend higher bitrates than places like Facebook. Now in the description, I'll link the YouTube and Facebook recommended bitrate guides so you can check them out and use the right one for your stream. Okay, so let's head down the list here. Source refers to the output that you're sending. Now vMix 4K Pro and Max allow you to create multiple video outputs. So this is where you could choose one of those outputs that you wanna stream with. Now, as I mentioned before, the output one is your main output here. So this thing here is your main output and this is what you're going to be streaming by default on output one. Now you could set up additional outputs with different video to send out on different streams using this drop-down menu. 
Now for the format, this will typically need to be H.264. Now as of 2024, vMix supports HEVC and AV1 streaming to YouTube only, although this may change in the future as more destinations support it. For AV1 and HEVC, you'll also need a GPU that supports it. AV1 and HEVC are great because they require less bandwidth than the equivalent quality H.264 stream. However, they're not widely adopted in 2024, but we do hope that's going to change. You can check out our AV1 and HEVC video for more information. I'd recommend leaving the profile, level, and preset on the default. Only if you have specific requirements from your streaming provider would I look at changing these. Profile selects the H.264 encoding profile to use. Level is an advanced setting for users wishing to specify a particular encoding level to match the capabilities of an endpoint decoder. Preset is an advanced setting for users who wish to fine tune the encoder. You can check out our streaming quality help guide linked in the description for more info. Okay, so next down the list, we have the aspect ratio slash crop section. And what this does, is it allows you to select the aspect ratio of your stream. Now by default, it will be on original, which is widescreen. You can choose to change this by selecting square or vertical here. Now, some streaming providers specifically require you to tell them that it's a vertical video if that's what you want to display. So you would need to select nine by 16 here. Others will just take a wide screen stream and then crop the sides of it. So you'll just need to check with your streaming provider if you're streaming vertically and see what they actually require. Next, we have the audio section and you can adjust what audio is being sent out on your stream from here. You can use the drop down menu here to change it from your master audio to a bus. Now this might be handy if you want to broadcast one of your streams with a different audio language. You could create a secondary bus to send out a second language on your second stream. For the additional settings down the bottom here, check out our help guide as you probably shouldn't mess with these unless you really know what you're up to. One handy thing here though is the stream delay which allows you to delay your stream to prevent things like cheating in esports amongst other things. So check out a help guide if you wanna know a little bit more about the stream delay. So once you're happy with your settings here, you can click the save button down here. Please note that most vMix users shouldn't need to make any changes to the video streaming quality settings. If you are having any issues with your stream, definitely contact us via our support page first instead of playing around with these settings. Under that, you'll see application. Don't make any changes here. Next to that, you'll see use hardware encoder. This is important as it will use our graphics card instead of our CPU when encoding the stream. Now we recommend that vMix users have an Nvidia GPU as they offer great performance and really good encoding for things like streaming and recording. Nvidia GPUs offer five simultaneous hardware encodes in 2024. Tim from the future here, they've actually changed their hardware encoder limit to eight in January, 2024, a week after I recorded this video. Now this again might change in the future as well. So check out the encoder matrix listed below to see how many encodes they actually offer on GeForce cards. And that means that vMix can use your GPU to do the encoding of this stream if this box is ticked. So if you tick this box now, you'll have seven more encodes that you can use for streaming and recording or however many they allow you to use in the future. Okay, so that's it for the settings. Now you can either start streaming straight away by clicking start one and then clicking save and close, or we can click save and close now and then start streaming if you know we're not ready, which we're not quite ready yet. So we're gonna click save and close. So I just need to make sure that my stream's somewhat acceptable. So I'm gonna overlay this here and maybe put this video up here. Uh, and so now I'm ready to stream what's in my program output here or output one. And I need to do that by going to the stream button down the bottom and just clicking on it. So just click on stream down the bottom here. So it's gonna go orange when it's connecting to your streaming provider like so, and then it will go red when it's fully connected. So here I am currently live on my YouTube page. I'm live streaming at 1080 60 on my YouTube page. So. Now I need to go ahead and switch off the stream. So I'm going to head back to vMix now. So in order to stop the stream, I just need to click on the stream button again. Now you can also automate things a little bit by using shortcuts on a keyboard or a stream deck or something in order to stop and start a stream. And you can also use triggers as well. When you're streaming and you see your streaming button go from red to orange, or some people call it an amber color, while you're streaming, it means that there is an issue with the stream. This is typically caused by a lack of internet uploads or an underpowered computer. 
In the description, I'll link a guide to troubleshooting your stream. It's really important to test out your equipment, your internet, and streaming provider before actually going live with a real production. There are three very simple rules to follow when it comes to live production and streaming to test, test, and test again. In the description, there are plenty of links to other videos that I've talked about, including streaming to more than one destination and AV1 and HEVC streaming. There are also links to the vMix streaming help guide if you wanna know more about encoder settings and also the YouTube and Facebook video bitrate guides. If you have any questions or support needs, please send us an email to our support team via vmix.com. There's a form you can fill out there or you can drop us an email. It's important for technical things like streaming that you contact us directly so we can give you the best support. Thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. Hopefully.